There's been a recent and rapid increase in purchases of the deworming drug ivermectin. Not because we've been increasing parasitic infections, but because a lot of people believe it can prevent or treat COVID-19. Are those people right? That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Let's start with the question, what is ivermectin? It's a molecule known to paralyze worms. And while recent headlines make clear that it's often used to deworm livestock, it's sometimes given to humans for parasitic infections like scabies. So yes, it can be used in humans. The next question is, can it be used in humans to successfully treat viral infections like COVID-19? Uh, we hate to be the bearer of bad news, but as of the day we shot this video, September 3rd, 2021, the answer to that question looks like a big no. And we've got the data to back that up. To the research. A double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial published in March found that symptom duration was not significantly different between patients taking a five-day course of ivermectin at 300 micrograms per kilogram and those taking placebo. Another randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial published in July reported no significant effect of ivermectin in a mean dose of 192 micrograms per kilogram on preventing hospitalization with COVID. The TOGETHER clinical trial, an effort to identify the utility of existing therapies against COVID-19, reported no effect of a three-day course of 400 micrograms per kilogram of ivermectin on risk of emergency care and hospitalization among individuals with COVID. This trial was halted early because the data were clearly showing no effect. And according to a report by the New York Times, it would have been stopped even earlier, but was allowed to continue a little longer due to the public's extreme interest in the drug. And finally, a review published at the end of July examined 14 randomized controlled trials on ivermectin and COVID-19. The authors concluded that the limited evidence available did not support the use of this drug for the treatment or prevention of COVID. While these studies suffer from some limitations, including sample sizes on the lower end, the available evidence does not suggest that ivermectin is paving us a path out of the pandemic. So how on earth has it gained so much popularity on the COVID scene that some pharmacists can't keep it on the shelves? Dr. Eric Moss of Columbia University wrote about this recently. Back in 2012, a paper was published on the ability of ivermectin to reduce viral infection yields in cultured cells. This is what we call an in vitro study. It's conducted in a Petri dish. This was followed by a few other papers reporting similar results. However, when studies moved into animals, the results didn't replicate. As we've often pointed out on this channel, findings in Petri dishes can't often be translated to the much more complex human body. However, this didn't stop the authors of the 2012 paper from testing the effects of ivermectin on SARS-CoV-2 replication in cancer cells. They reported that bathing cancer cells with the ivermectin in a Petri dish reduced the viral yield of SARS-CoV-2. And now, without regard for the many apparent issues with these results, the internet has come alive with tales of ivermectin's efficacy against COVID. There was one study in humans published as a preprint in November of 2020 that claimed ivermectin in addition to standard care was very effective for treatment of COVID-19 patients. However, the report was retracted by the preprint server in July of 2021 for ethical concerns after reports of it being based on fraudulent research. Another issue to consider, as pointed out by the aforementioned Dr. Moss, the concentration of drug needed to inhibit half of the maximum biological component being measured is called the IC50. The IC50 for ivermectin in the in vitro studies was about two micromolar, which is 1,000 to 10,000 times higher than what is approved by the FDA and that can be taken by oral dose in people. So even if it did inhibit viral activity in humans, which doesn't appear to be the case, it's at a dose that cannot be achieved by buying ivermectin from your local pharmacy. And even if you were able to get a dose that high, it could very well be toxic. Keep that in mind if you're browsing the shelves of a livestock supply store for ivermectin formulated for thousand pound animals. As the FDA recently tweeted, and I'm not making this up, you are not a horse, you are not a cow. Seriously, you all, stop it. Look, we'd love it if ivermectin were a silver bullet for COVID-19, but it's not. And to pretend otherwise not only distracts from things that really work like vaccines, it's causing problems like increased calls to poison control centers. Like I said before, we don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but we also don't want to let the bears of false information slide by.
Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on obesity in kids. We'd appreciate it if you'd like the video, subscribe down below, and go on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help support the show even during a global pandemic. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow and Joe Sevitz, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.